All right, guys, we have a major heat wave expected for the eastern U.S. next week. In fact, it's one of the strongest signals for a heat wave for this part of the country in a few years. So we're looking at the European model, the 500 millibar height anomalies. Uh, the areas in blue are troughs of low pressure, and areas in orange and red are upper level ridges or upper level high pressure areas. And then each one of these lines is what's called an isohipsy or a line of equal geopotential height. And once you get um once you get isohipsies of 591 and greater, uh, for example, right here is the 591 line, and right here we have a 594 line. Once you get isohipsies of 591 or greater, that shows you where you have a pretty strong uh, heat dome in place, or an area where you where you would expect a heat wave to occur. And so, just as we go out in time here, this is starting off today, June 14th. Um, notice how we go into this weekend. We start to get this little uh, ridge of a high, upper level high pressure system move to the east. And then as it does so, watch how it expands and intensifies going into next week uh, very rapidly here. Uh, this is by Monday afternoon, and we already have a very strong upper level ridge in place across much of the east. And for context, there's the 591 line right in here, and here, here we have a 594 isohipsy line. So already a strong heat dome in place. Uh, by Monday already of next week across uh, the eastern US and this uh, ridge expands very rapidly going into Tuesday um, in fact we have a nice hipsy line of up to 597 uh, centered across uh, New York and Pennsylvania by Tuesday afternoon uh, this is a extremely high geopotential heights um, we're talking uh, almost near record geopotential height uh, anomalies here uh, for portions of the northeast if this does verify um, So in that we have a very intense heat dome in place and for example, here's the 591 isohipsy line So very strong heat dome a very strong upper level ridge in place uh, Across much of the east next week and even going into the southeastern portions of Canada. It's even stronger by Wednesday here uh, Notice how by Wednesday um, The European model is showing a very rare 600 isohipsy line it's very it's very rare to see in a 600 line anywhere in the country during the summertime, but especially across portions of the Northeast. If that does verify, that would set record high uh, geopotential height numbers for that area there, and that shows that we have an extremely strong upper level ridge in place uh, for the much of the beginning and middle of next week across the eastern U.S. And for example, for context, here's the 591 isohipsy line uh, so anywhere in that area is under a very strong heat dome in place so what will be happening next week is that we'll have a lot of uh, sink and air under that upper level ridge across the eastern u.s and as that air sinks it's, it heats up as it gets compressed and that's how you get the extreme heat to occur and any low pressure system is forced to go up and over that ridge where you could actually have multiple thunderstorm complexes to occur over the over the northern periphery of the ridge uh, these are called the ridge rider thunderstorms and that'll be a likely occurrence across portions of the upper midwest into portions of canada and northern new england uh, as they will be along that northern periphery of the ridge and they'll be in an ideal spot for these what's called ridge rider thunderstorms and then as we go out into the end of the week going all the way up to friday uh, we still have a very strong ridge in place. Uh, it shifts a little bit, starts to shift a little bit to the west. Um, I'm drawing there's the 591 line, and we still have a 597 line across portions of the eastern Ohio Valley into the Mid Atlantic. So it's still going all the the entire week is just filled with this very strong heat dome in place, and I I would expect some ridge ride and thunderstorm complexes right along that northern periphery there across the upper midwest into deep into ontario and quebec canada and into portions of northern new england as they will be in, a, in an ideal spot to get those low pressure systems to ride along that northern periphery of the upper level ridge and then playing this out to the end of the model cycle going all the way out to next weekend this is the weekend of june 22nd 3rd and 4th uh the european model is showing that the ridge does weaken quite drastically uh, we still have a 591 isohipsy line in there across portions of the east and also a, a 591 line developing across the west where i do think the west will start to heat up once again as we get to the end of june 
as that ridge starts to expand westward. But across the east, I do expect this uh, ridge to continue. Not as strong maybe as it as next week, but I do expect some ridge to continue to end the month of June. Uh, keeping some slightly above normal temperatures across much of the east still uh, we're talking still could easily get 80s a couple 90s here and there across much of the east as we go out to june and even looking beyond that into early july it's looking like we're just being an above normal temperature pattern across much of the east so overall the next several weeks look pretty hot over much of the east and even across the west i do expect above normal temperatures to continue um, as that as that ridge expands westward next weekend and as that should stay there throughout the end of the month of June and now looking at max temperature forecast from the European model starting off with today you can see we have just widespread 90s across much of the south and central US but that that heat wave really kicks off by Sunday and Monday a few days from now uh, by by uh, June 16th and 17th um, here's a look at forecast highs for for Sunday, uh, widespread 90s across much of the lower Midwest, Mississippi Valley, the Southeast, even so in a couple uh, hundred degree temperatures possible here across the deep south from Arkansas and Louisiana over towards portions of Georgia. And as we go into Monday, uh, that heat really starts to expand north with the core of it over the Ohio Valley. Uh, we're talking upper 90s across much of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia. Uh, maybe even lower Michigan, um, even the potential for maybe a hundred degree uh, triple digit heat here and there uh, locally across that area there. Uh, for example, it's showing 100 degrees for Cincinnati on Monday. And as we go into Tuesday, uh, very extreme heat uh, just rapidly starts to expand. Uh, still the core of it over the Ohio Valley and portions of the Mid-Atlantic uh, showing temperatures reaching possibly the triple digits almost across portions of Ohio, West Virginia, even Pennsylvania. Also widespread 90s, even as far north as Quebec and Ontario, Canada. Also all the way up and down the East Coast, temperatures reaching 90. Wide, very, right, wide, very widespread heat with this upper level ridge. Um, and as we go into Wednesday, um, the European model is, I, is a little bit ag too aggressive with the temperatures here. So in a lot of areas reaching 100 degrees. I think it's a little bit overdone. I think most areas will be in like the mid to upper 90s. Uh, potentially, I do think some areas do have the potential to see a 100 degree heat out of this, especially across uh, Indiana, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Kentucky, uh, lowlands of West Virginia. I think that area has the best chance to see a 100 degree heat out of this uh, locally. But otherwise, the European model is showing still widespread heat across much of the east and into Canada, it's still going into Wednesday. I would expect widespread upper 90s in this area by Wednesday, um, maybe even some areas reaching 100 degrees out of this, uh, record highs, daily record high temperatures possible uh, anywhere in the Ohio Valley into the northeast uh, next week. And then going into Thursday, uh, cold front moves along, that nor along the north, like I said, the, as those low pressure systems uh, right along the northern periphery of that ridge. Um, it brings an end to the heat for portions of Quebec and Ontario, but still widespread heat occurring across the Ohio Valley into the Northeast, uh, widespread upper 90s, um, even the potential for maybe 100 degrees here and there um, across portions of the New England and the Ohio Valley. And then going into Friday, uh, still, still the European model, the European model is still very aggressive with the ridge going into the end of the week. The GFS and Canadians start to break it down a little faster, but the European keeps the extreme heat across the Ohio Valley and Northeast going into the end of the week. Um, and like I said, I think these are a bit too aggressive, these temperatures. It's trying to show many areas reach 100 degrees. I think it'll be more like mid to upper 90s with a few local 100 degree temperatures here and there, especially across the urban centers. And then going into Saturday, um, like I said, it's still showing widespread heat going into next weekend on June 22nd. And also, like I said, it's still showing widespread 100 degree heat. The European model tends to go overboard with the heat once you get a week out, and then it brings it back down to more reasonable levels, more realistic levels as you get closer 
So I would expect these temperatures to cool off about 5 degrees uh, for these uh, forecasts for next weekend. Because even as we go into next Sunday, June 23rd, um, notice how it's just showing widespread 100 degree weather across the Mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley. I do think the European model is saying that that ridge still is in place by all the way through June 24th. But I would expect the temperatures to be more realistic in the mid to upper 90s with a few local 100 degree weather temperatures, temperature readings across the mid-Atlantic. Not widespread 100s just yet. But it is concerning that the European model is showing how long this heat wave could last, potentially a week or more. Um, that's something to be concerned about if it does last that long because the GFS and the Canadian uh, break it down and show temperatures more in the 80s by June 23rd and 24th for much of the Northeast and Ohio Valley. And usually the Canadian, or excuse me, usually the European model is the one that's not as aggressive that far out. Usually it's the GFS that's really aggressive with the heat. So that makes me a little bit, bit more concerned that the European model is showing that this is could last a week potentially, this heat. So just something to think about. And then next we'll be looking at the precipitation over the next 7 to 10 days. Um, you can clearly see the ridge riders I'll be, I, I was talking about as we go into next week. Uh, notice how we have a low pressure system way up here in Manitoba by Sunday. And as we go into a few days beyond that, notice how we have, we have thunderstorm clusters across portions of the upper Midwest uh, along that northwestern portion of that upper level ridge. And then going all beyond that into into the middle of the week, notice how we have uh, multiple thunderstorm clusters across portions of the Midwest and going into Quebec and Ontario, Canada. Those are those ridge riders I was talking about. Those thunderstorm clusters, those thunderstorm clusters that ride along that northern periphery of that ridge. And uh, on a side note, the European was actually showing the potential for a tropical storm development across the western Gulf of Mexico next week. Uh, whether that comes to fru fruition or not, I, there is the potential for a lot of widespread heavy rain across coastal Texas and into coastal Mexico. Uh, an area that desperately needs rain is in Mexico as they've been dealing with ex very extreme heat over the past few weeks. Um, I just saw that Mexico got their all-time hottest June temperature on record, uh, 51 degrees Celsius, which is about 124 degrees Fahrenheit. So portions of eastern Mexico really needs that rain, uh, whether that's a tropical system or not, if it's named or not, I should say. But anyway, as we go into the next week, middle to the end of next week, uh, notice how we have multiple, just constant thunderstorm clusters across the Midwest, going into Canada, and into portions of New England, along that northern periphery of the ridge. Uh, some of these could be strong to severe across portions of the upper Midwest. Um, but I would expect widespread rainfall across that area there, um, even in the portions of Canada uh, there, there where I have it circled and into northern New England where we could have multiple days of thunderstorms um, along that northern periphery of the ridge. But underneath that upper level ridge is going to be very dry weather over the next week. Um, something to be concerned about is the rapid development of drought uh, with such extreme heat and uh, rapidly drying soil moisture. And then looking at the total rainfall of the next uh, eight to nine days, the first thing you notice is the extreme rainfall of across portions of the Midwest and even going into Canada and into northern New England potentially. The area, like I've been saying, with getting those uh, ridge right and thunderstorms that develop along the northern periphery of the upper level ridge. Um, I do expect that we could, I, I do think the heaviest rainfall will, will occur here, uh, the bullseye here across portions of Minnesota. Uh, maybe the Dakotas also, where we could easily get over four inches of rain across much of that area. Over the next eight to nine days, uh, they will be in a prime spot to get multiple days of thunderstorm clusters as they will be on the northwestern side of that upper level ridge. Also here across portions of eastern Mexico and southeastern Texas, coastal Texas, um, potentially four to eight inches of rainfall there. Uh, I, know port I know eastern Mexico could use it, but maybe not that much that in that little time. We could be talking about flooding in that area there across portions of Mexico and maybe across coastal Texas. And then the last thing you can easily notice is the absence of rainfall under that upper level ridge next week. 
across much of the east, uh, the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, the Tennessee Valley, Mid-Mississippi Valley. Um, pretty much very little to no rainfall over the next week under that strong ridge. Um, we could be talking, like I said, a rapid development drought across portions of the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic where there's already a little bit behind on rainfall in that area. So th that's also what I'm very concerned about is the rapidly drying soil moisture, which could actually enhance the heat wave a bit um, when you have dry conditions like that, especially if you go to the end of the heat wave by like next by the end of next week into next weekend if that ridge does stay in place like the european model is saying then it would be a little bit more realistic to get temperatures near 100 degrees as that soil dries out real quickly and then one last thing i forgot to show you guys is the dew points for next week and the heat indices because as that heat wave occurs there's going to be a lot of moisture advection going on if we go into next week and as that high pressure system is sitting off the east coast it's going to be driving a lot of moisture advection across from the Gulf of Mexico into the eastern U.S. Uh, that's going to be bringing dew points up into the 70s across much of the east, uh, upper 60s and into the 70s across much of the eastern U.S. next week. So that's going to make it feel extremely muggy along with the temperatures in the 90s. So the next thing I want to show you is the heat, the heat indices. So looking at the heat indices for next week, this is by Monday afternoon. Uh, we could have widespread heat indices near 100 degrees across the Ohio Valley. And then going into Tuesday, uh, widespread still across the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic, uh, heat indices near 100 degrees. I would expect advisories and warnings to go up across much of this area next week. Um, heat, heat advisories and excessive heat warnings to go up for this area, for this area under the upper level ridge. Um, still going into Wednesday heat indices 100 degrees possible from a portion of the Ohio Valley even going into the major cities of Canada um, and then still in the Thursday heat indices over 100 degrees from the Ohio Valley into New England a uh, very extreme heat out of this very concerning um, and still going into Friday and into Saturday and Sunday also heat indices near 100 degrees and over 100 degrees for much of the east next week all the way through the end of the week maybe potentially into next weekend depending on how, how long this upper level ridge lasts it's been a few years since this portion of the country has had a heat wave potential like this so just stay safe out there everyone and i hope you have a good one guys see you next time